gold finger. He's the man, the man with the Midas touch. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Spring Offensive. I'm Panzer King here in the Lion's Den, bringing you a brief tutorial of some other awards that are going to be given out to some lucky people. Um, well, I shouldn't say lucky people, but probably deserving people um, of the Spring Offensive. And we'll dive right in there. But in this image, you can just briefly see, we have the order of sequence in the background. So this will be kind of a visual clock um, set up for people to realize, is it the axis turn first via Germany and the Spanish nationalists? Um, then it's the common turn, then the Japanese, then the Commonwealth, the French, the Italians, and then of course the Americans and the, the Chinese as well, um, the KMT. So that should just uh, help people, but also in this setup, um, we have two special awards in this room and from the other videos i'm sure you know what other awards we're talking about but these specific ones are ones i've been thinking about for a while and we're going to cover them step by step we're going to start over here with the most honorable commander award now this is basically um the most sportsmanlike player um and how it works is is there's a voting setup right here and you get a card only one card per person and you get to vote first second or third pick now currently right now in the spring offensive we probably have about a half a dozen people signed up for it and we probably are not going to have too many more than that just because of co uh, current COVID restrictions but basically how it works is um, at the end of the game um, you decide who was the most honorable commander, who was the most sportsmanlike individual that I really looked up to or I thought really did go the extra mile to make this experience amazing. And they can pick whoever that might be, uh, they can put down their call sign, whoever that might be, and then their second pick and their third pick. The second and third are designed to break any ties, so we don't have any ties um, so if somebody gets uh, tied on the first with another player, uh, maybe the second choice will help, help break that tie. So, um, it's very important to me to honor people who are, well, honorable, but also, uh, just good players and good sportsmanship players. So basically how this works is there are three medals here and I picked these three medals. They're all copies of the real thing. One is called the George Cross, the other is the Order of the Rising Sun, and last but not least, Order of Lenin. Uh, this, for the most honorable category, um, is helping symbolize, and I picked um, one from each faction. Uh, the George Cross was created, I believe, in the Second World War, uh, more so for civilians um, and other uh, people who did, you know, wonderful things in the Second World War to help their country win. Um, and, um, and I figured that would be a very good representative, historically accurate one to give to, uh, to, uh, the allied player if, um, they're lucky enough to win. So if you're an allied player playing France, playing the Commonwealth, playing, playing a major power, like even like the United States, um, if you are selected as the most honorable commander, you will be given the George Cross. Um, however, if you're one of the Axis players and you deem to be the most honorable, you will be given the Order of the Rising Sun. Uh, the Order of the Rising Sun comes or goes back into uh, Japanese history. It's a very common medal in the Second World War, given to a lot of higher dignitaries. There's various classes. Uh, this is a rough representation of uh, the fifth or sixth class. Uh, there's seven and eight, and also there's second, first, third. Um, higher ranks that were kind of given to more higher diplomatic people, uh, definitely in, in the Second World War and after that. It's still an award given today. Uh, they just have got rid of the 7th and 8th class and uh, changed its name. But it's one of my most favorite medals. It's a very beautiful medal. So consequently, if you're part of the Axis factions, regardless whether you're playing Italy, Japan, or Germany, if you're once again one of the most honorable players out there and your peers think that, you will be given the Order of the Rising Sun. And of course, 
last but not least, the Comintern, the Order of Lenin. You know, this was a very common award given to uh, people, um, not people, sorry, um, soldiers and um, um, people who did extra um, exceptional things um, defending the USSR against uh, against the Axis aggression, right? Um, and I wanted to represent that um, uh, by giving that medal if you're the common turn player and you will be awarded the Order of Lenin. So just very historical medals, but I really wanted to make it very classy, show people what they're fighting for or what they're working hard for. Um, now granted, through your own strength or genius, this medal you know, may be unattainable for you if you're not a very um, um, sportsman-like person, right? If you're very uh, not outgoing and stuff like that, this might be something that might help you become just a better player and a better better uh, person overall. And, and, and definitely if you show those characteristics, I know it'll rub off um, on other people and you might get their vote, right? Uh, the whole key thing about these awards is that they're appointed or awarded uh, by your peers, as I've already stated. But it's very important in the fact that, you know what, not every award um, or medal in the Second World War was given to you because of, of your um, strength or your merit or your bravery. Others were given for other reasons too, right? And if you do give this, and I've just given an example here, um, if you are perhaps, let's say, the Italian player and you are the most honorable commander, um, then you will get the Order of the Rising Sun from the Japanese government. Now, I've magnetized it here with a ceramic magnet and glued it on this copy. I've actually had to alter this copy just a little bit um, just to make it look a little bit more presentable because all are not created equal. But you can see here the starting date for the spring offensive um, and the, the, what it actually is. But because it's magnetic, it's very easy to put these on here and also take them off if you want to wear them, if you feel that's uh, something um, that, uh, that you uh, want to do, then that's totally up to you. And of course, then we have a plate here that we can easily stick on so that this trophy or award can be given to the recipient um, on the final day of the actual tournament. And of course, we don't know who's gonna win, so it could be either of these. Um, and that's the nice thing about it. Having them quickly magnetic, you can take them off and put them on there. So, now the other one here is a little bit uh, different, but same criteria. You have to be voted uh, to receive this award, and that's the most strategic commander. Uh, in layman's terms, the MVP, Most Valuable Player Award. Who was the best strategic commander? Who did the most amazing and brilliant attacks? Or um, who just honestly just showed the best, uh, the best strength as a commander or possibly even a leader in the group of your coalition too, right? Those are the characteristics that'll probably lead to you getting a first or second or third vote here. Um, so once again, voting it. Um, and these are the medals that are up for grabs. So most strategic commander, you have the Allies, the Legion of Merit. Um, now, of course, this was given out to many U.S. soldiers. Um, and I believe actually a, a few other foreign ones, too. But it was awarded to um, a lot of servicemen in the Second World War. Audie Al Murphy is a good example, right? You know, Legion of Merit is a very honorable um, and uh, I think one of the most beautiful and prettiest uh, medals you can receive from the U.S. military. So as before with the most honorable, the George Cross, which was a British award or Commonwealth award. Now well, this is an American award for the Allies faction. And then of course we have the Axis Iron Cross. Now this one I picked specifically because historically it does have the 1939 on the bottom there of the cross but it does not have the swastika because I don't necessarily believe in giving awards with the swastika on there, even though it'd be historically accurate. So the oak leaves are in its place, which was kind of um, traditional of the earlier awards that were granted in the Franco-Prussian Award and, or, and, the, uh, and the First World War. Now, um, once again, I'm big on historical accuracy, but in this case, I did make an exception. And I think everybody can know why. And once again, last but not least, the Comintern, the Order of the Red Banner. Very honorable award. And these were uh, 
one by several, several famous um, people, um, generals, soldiers alike, snipers um, in the USSR. And uh, in, it's not inconceivable for them to have received many uh, Order of the Red Banners, two or three or four of them, right? So I figured that was the most appropriate um, to give to the most strategic commander. And that is those three medals right there. Nicely framed, nicely labeled, so you can know what's up for grabs. And this will also make you um, keep a keen eye because if you want to win the spring offensive and, you know, um, that's a goal probably for every participant, uh, but also these awards are for how you win. How is your merit? How was your um, uh, sportsmanlike conduct? How was all of that? And this is how you know if you truly won, um, if you were also uh, seen by through your peers that you also deserve these medals. So uh, once again, just made a, uh, a copy of the Iron Cross here and uh, once again magnetize it on the back here and then of course it is magnetic which is lovely it makes life so much easier and you just put it on there and of course the recipient in this case is also german and this could be the japanese player for instance but he got the most strategic commander award and there you go then you got the iron cross so it's up for grabs for every faction and every person now it doesn't matter whether there's one table or 20 tables at the spring offensive um currently right now there's only one this is an award system I want to do every year. So consequently, you know, you might have a coalition of well, six, ten Axis players. Uh, well, guess what? Um, you're going to be up against your ally players, which also might have ten, and maybe possibly three or four communist players. So consequently, you'll have 20 people, uh, but only... Uh, two out of that, or possibly even one, one could win both of these awards too, uh, would have a chance of getting that. Obviously, the less people that attend, the higher your chances are. But once again, this is not something that you can bribe your way into and, uh, uh, and get. Obviously, you need people's votes, but you need to get their affection, their admiration, you know, their respect, just like you would uh, with generals. And that's indeed what we are in this spring offensive. We're commanders, we're generals. And we want the respect of our men or the respect of our fellow generals, much like it was in the Second World War with Rommel, Patton, um, you know, uh, Zhukov, right? Uh, Admiral Yamamoto and Nimitz, like they had a lot of respect for their contemporaries. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to share this with you. Hopefully you enjoy this. Uh, it's a nice classy addition to the Spring Offensive. And we will see if you guys end up winning one of these. Uh, in the future spring offensive games. Panzer King here in the Lion's Den signing off. Take care and you guys stay classy.